Good afternoon. We're standing here on the Agacon grounds. Behind me, the Agacon Museum, and behind you is the Ishmaeli Center. The uh, building itself was built in 2010, um, and it was marked by a foundation laying ceremony that was attended uh, by uh, Stephen Harper. The grounds were purchased uh, from Shell Corporation and Bata Shoes headquarters. Uh, they demolished the Bata Shoes headquarters, which was controversial because many considered the building itself to be a work of modern architecture and had merits as a heritage site. Uh, however, they did bring down, they did demolish uh, the headquarters and uh, rose the Aga Khan Museum from those grounds. Uh, inside are wares generally of Eastern um, cultures. Uh, more specifically, um, Islamic art. Uh, the building hosts a number of venues, including an internal courtyard, they host exhibitions, gallery spaces, uh, museum spaces, a restaurant, school, classrooms, you name it. It's a multi functional building. It even has a yurt. It even has a yurt in the courtyard. You may notice that the building itself uh, a soft white matte material. It's Brazilian white granite. And it's been finished to a nice uh, low luster. Um, and there are other features surrounding and inside the building that are reflective in nature, but this building, in the spirit of modernism, uh, maintains its planar, flat white planar zone. So while still speaking in the language, of modern architecture, it's breaking rules and finding a new way to express uh, the simplicity and pragmatic nature of uh, modern architecture. Behind us is the Ishmaeli building. The Ishmaeli building was designed for a center for uh, spiritual practices and the Aga Khan Museum was mainly uh, to represent more academic um, science and culture fields. Uh, it is glorious against the gr dark gray sky. Um, it has got a semi-translucent um, glazing, uh, which sort of lends to the uh, ephemeral quality of the building itself. This is a big heat. This uh, very reflective sculpture um, was made by sculptor Parviz Tenamoli. Uh, it, it's called Big Heat, which just in Persian, heat just means nothingness. So in Persian culture, nothingness, uh, God created the universe out of nothing. So nothingness and everything are very much so entwined. So I think that that is what the sculpture is trying to get at. Nothing and everything. And that is sort of reflected ha, in its very reflective nature. It sort of seems to um, offer itself up back out to the The museum doesn't boast the usual front and center portico directing patrons inside. The entrance is around the back of the building, so you must look for signage like a map to find the entrance. I try to make connections to early eastern structures like the angled pyramids or the monolithic, monolithic presence of a tomb, but with no evident entrance, perhaps? No immediate connections come to mind. but. What is evident is a graduation of ornamentation from the outside to the inside and to finally the most ornate, the artifacts. All throughout the building, there are these patterned partitions that separate the spaces, but they do not obstruct sight lines or light like this wooden lattice here. It reminds me of an abacus, 
also reminds me of molecule bonds. The Belle Reve room is the first room you encounter. It showcases some incredible ceramics, some dating back to as early as the 9th century. The room was originally conceived for the prince and princess for their Swiss chateau just outside of Geneva. The room was reimagined for the museum, and their website describes the room as an ornate environment, and I could not agree more. Just on the other side, patterned glass encloses the open central courtyard. It fil filters in natural sunlight into the rest of the main building. Currently displaying a traditional yurt, its floors are also patterned and heated, which keeps the snow from accumulating. It's all very reflective and patterned. It contrasts the stark, opaque mass of the facade. I wonder if I had not known about the museum, would I have ever guessed it housed some of the most ornate, patterned artifacts I had ever seen. There seems to be little to no connection between the sensibilities of the reduced modernist forms of the exterior and the intricate, opulent nature of the treasures inside. The stated aim of the foundation is to bring awareness of Islamic and Eastern cultures to the general population. But the site is located 12 miles north of downtown and is not easy to get to. And the curb appeal is underwhelming. The building, building doesn't exactly scream, come on in kids, it's fun. Artifacts are those of sultans, princes, and princesses. There is little about the story of the everyday, nothing about the serfs or peasants or slaves, and of course the Aga Khan is a very wealthy man himself. Elitist might be a bit harsh, but it's certainly not populist. The Hindi Mandir building in Etobicoke is a striking contrast. Its effusive ornamentation is visible from the 427, red and white banners fluttering in the wind. Unlike the Aga, Aga Khan Museum, it was funded by donations. It is inviting and also open to the public at certain times. Is its unapologetic representation of Islamic culture considered too straightforward for architectural elites? Too ornate? Too direct, perhaps? It begs the question, considering the museum's status in the architectural world, winning awards left and right. The Aga Khan is known for his contributions and interest in architecture too. I wonder how much his personal influence uh, and interests factored into the design process. The museum was featured in an episode of Star Trek, featuring the planet Vulcan. If you are unfamiliar with the Star Trek universe, the Vulcans are a humanoid race that favor rationalism and order over emotion and expression. What does that say? The producers chose the Aga Khan Museum to reflect the sensibilities of this hyper-rationalist race. The Aga Khan Museum is a striking, monumental structure that is rooted in modernism. Even the cantilevers are monumental and have a dizzying effect. They feel like they could offset the balance of the building. Contemporary architecture is lucky to have access to the marvels of modern engineering. The cantilevered facade seems to boast its ability to defy nature. Are we inured by this heroic nature of modernism? Is it the CGI of architecture? As much as I enjoyed the experience of visiting the Aga Khan, I can't help but wonder 
if I am missing the link between the building and the content and the theme of the museum. It's a building to be admired, but maybe not loved. It appeals to your intellect, but maybe not so much your emotions.